Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Hallelujah. We bless his name. Hallelujah. God bless you. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Come on, come on, share like and invite. God bless you, family. God bless you, Sister King. Uh, nephew, uh, Vante, God bless you. Shanice, Green, God bless you. Tanika Burnett, God bless you. Tommy Moore, God bless you. Matthew Owens, God bless you. Nisha Few, God bless you. Listen, share like an invite. Let us know where you're tuning in from tonight. Mr. Johnson Jr., God bless you. JJ, as we're going to call you, Johnson Jr., JJ. God bless you. Come on, share like an invite. Let us know where you're tuning in from tonight. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Share like an invite. Let us know where you're tuning in from tonight. Hallelujah. 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 How many people came to eat tonight? If you came to eat tonight, put the plate and the silverware up. If you came to eat tonight, put the plate and the silverware up. Hallelujah. Remember, no season needed. Hallelujah. The word is already seasoned for this season of your life. Glory. Hallelujah. Come on, share like an invite. Let us know where you're tuning in from tonight. Carrie Boyd, God bless you. Share like an invite. Let us know where you're tuning in from tonight. Hallelujah. We want to talk tonight about are you ready? We want to talk. I'm telling you, you don't want to miss this. This is going to minister to your mind, your body, and your soul. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. You got to have a well-made up mind. Share it. God bless you, Miss Sharon. Hallelujah. Come on, share like an invite. Let us know, Lavonia. God bless you. Hallelujah. Let us know where you're tuning in from tonight. Those of you that came to eat tonight, put the plate and the silverware up. God bless you, Sister Tracy. Remember, no season needed for the word is already seasoned for this season of your life. We thank God for his presence. We thank God for his grace. We thank God for his mercy. Hallelujah. God bless you, Miss Janice. Hallelujah. Come on, share like an invite. Let us know where you're tuning in from tonight. Maybe your family member needs to hear this. Maybe your friend needs to hear this. Your timeline is somebody's lifeline. Your timeline is somebody's lifeline. We need you to tune in tonight. Those of you who have your Bibles, get to the book of St. Matthew chapter 25. St. Matthew chapter 25. Hallelujah. We, we want to speak on tonight, St. Matthew 25. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. I feel his presence, family. Come on, if you know, I need everybody to tag five people very quickly. We ain't going to hold you long. Lord, in the spirit of love, tag five people that you know that needs to know that needs to hear this message. That are you ready? Or are you ready? Not are you getting ready, but are you ready? Hallelujah. We want to discuss that tonight. One thing about being ready is you ready to go. One thing about getting ready is you're not ready to go. If we was getting ready to go to the movies, I said, I'll be over there to pick you up at 8, 8.15. I pull up at 8.15. If you're not ready, you're not ready. 
but you should be ready by 8.15. I'm just speaking in the natural. Hallelujah. You need to tag five people that you know need to hear, hear this message. Hallelujah. You need to tag five people you know need to hear this message. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Come on. Everybody, I encourage everybody. Five people. Are you ready? I need you to tag them in. We're getting ready to go in prayer. From prayer to the word. Five people. To ask them, are they ready? Five people, that's all. The five is for grace. Let the grace of God show up today. Hallelujah. I'm going to do my five. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to. Click this button and, and do my fire. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. I do a little bit more than five. In order to be ahead, you got to be ahead. Some of the people say that God called them into headship, leadership, but they're not ahead. The people know more than they know. They're not pushing to know more of God. They're not pushing to have a visitation from Him. Hallelujah. But tonight we want to encourage every believer. God bless you, Michael. God bless you, Brittany. Hallelujah. 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 Are you ready? Are you ready? Send the fire your family after you. Have, have sent your fire, send the fire. We are ready to go into prayer and from prayer into the word. We want to work this word tonight. It is one thing to, to get ready. It's another thing to be getting ready. And it's another thing to be ready. Let me say that again. It's another, it's one thing to be getting ready. There's another thing to be already ready. Send the fire. I'm encouraging every believer under the sound of my voice. Five people. Tag them in. Tag five people in. That you don't need to hear this. That you don't need to hear this. This word is getting ready to open your eyes on a whole nother level. On another whole nother dimension. Send the fire family. We're getting ready to go into prayer. Dear, from prayer into the word. We're in the book of St. Matthew chapter number 25. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, your love and kindness. We thank you for being God and being God all by yourself. Father, besides you, there is no other. And Father, we bless your holy name for your great and your greatly to be praised. And Father, we know that without you, we could do nothing. Father, we honor you tonight. Father, we give this life to you. Cover us under your blood. Shield and protect us from any seen and unseen danger. Let us decrease in the natural, increase in the spirit. Father, give us this day our daily bread. Saturate me with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of your word. Father, we thank you right now. For everything you're doing, you did, you have done, and you will do. Father, we thank you for your grace that's in the place. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we decree and declare your presence. Father, you said in your word, we have not because we ask not. Father, saturate me with your wisdom, your knowledge, your understanding. Father, we thank you. We glorify you. We magnify you. We adore you. We install you. We lift you up. Father, we bind every hand of the enemy every distraction we bind it now we render it powerless right now in the name of Jesus and we decree and declare it done in your son Jesus name come on let everybody say amen come on amen hallelujah come on listen if you were tagged here if you were tagged here because somebody thought enough of you that you needed to hear this message and we encourage you to tag five people that you know that needs to hear this message. Hallelujah. Your timeline is someone's lifeline. We want to get it get started. The question that we, we ask today is are you ready? We, we not seeming like we're ready, but are you ready? 
the, the problem with the body of Christ today is that we always saying we getting ready, but we never ready. It, it's always an excuse when it comes to us and our lifestyle for living for Christ. We always say we are work in progress, but we never progress past that stage. We got to understand that when you look in the mirror, when you ask yourself this question, if, if Jesus was to come back today, will you be ready? Will, will you be ready? If, if you just not tuning in, somebody thought enough of you to tag you in this video. Now we asking you to think of enough of somebody else to tag them in the video. Tag five people. Those of you that have it, do it. But we want to ask the question, are you ready? Anything that take you away from God is not a blessing, it's a curse. Are you ready? See, the enemy know that people, hallelujah, always say we getting ready. We, we getting ready, but we're never ready. It's always that I'm a work in progress. I'm, I'm pushing, I'm pressing toward. But the truth be told, are you really pressing? Is it that God can't, can't do it or you don't want it to be done? You, you saints, we got to be real with ourselves tonight. We got to be real with ourselves tonight. That if we really want Christ, it's nothing separating you. You, you got to be willing and ready to do whatever it takes to make sure that salvation belongs to you. If it take you walking away from some stuff that's causing you to walk contrary to the word of God, you got to be willing and ready to let it go. I ask the question tonight, are you ready? Are you getting ready? It's a difference between the two. I, I want to discuss it tonight through the word of God. Now, not just my word, but through his word, because I want you to understand that you need to be ready. The Bible say no man know the day nor the hour that the son of God return. You, you need to be ready. You need to be about your father's business. I need every person on the side of my voice saying, are you ready? I want you to ask the person just that is reading this. They're going to read your comment. Are you ready? And then ask yourself, are you ready? Because the problem is that, that we all want to go to heaven. But are we all willing to do what it takes to get there? See, anybody can live any kind of way. Anybody can walk contrary to the word of God. The devil brings trials and tribulations. The devil brings stuff to, to get you out of the will of God. It's, it's every time that you make up your mind to do right. The thing that you was walking away from come to you easy. The very people that you said you were done dealing with, they start acting right. Is there anybody on the line tonight? Where, where you was trying to give yourself to Christ. You was trying to do right. And all of a sudden. Now because you decide to do right. The person that caused you. To push you in that direction. Now all of a sudden they want to act right. Have you ever been. In that position. They, they, they want to act like they ready now. But you cannot fall. For the trick. You, you can't fall for it because it's only a distraction. Is there anybody tonight under the sound of my voice that, that, that you were fed up to hear and you was getting ready to leave a, a relationship? You were getting ready to walk out of a dead situation and all of a sudden, soon as I make up my mind to leave, now the, the reason I was leaving, you don't want to do that no more. The person, they don't want to do that. They saying that they done had a life changing experience. They, that they don't want to lose you because they love you. They said, we, it's more than that. I'll quit doing what I'm doing to be with you. 
Is there anybody tonight that you didn't experience that, that you was in a bad relationship? The moment that you made up your mind that that relationship is over, that you walking out of it, that is right then and there where they decided to make up their mind that they going to treat you right. They, they done made up their mind that I don't want to, I don't want to run around on you. I value you. How is it you value me when I'm leaving, but when I was there staying, you did not value me. Ah, uh, can I get a witness tonight? Can anybody bear witness to this tonight? Can anybody, the, the moment that, that I said it's over, it's done with, I done made up in my mind that I'm, I'm fit to leave and do right. All of a sudden, the people that caused me to make up my mind start doing right. Now they got a change in plan. Now they want to do right their self. We living in a time, in a period where men are lovers of themselves and lovers of God. You, you got to make up your mind that you want God more than anything. See, this world only has certain things to offer you that's going to keep you contrary to the word of God. It ain't going to line you up with the word of God. This world want to offer you stuff that's going to get you out of the will of God. The moment you saying that I'm going to serve God, all of a sudden, the, the guy that you were living with, the guy that was living with you, the woman that was standing with you, all of a sudden, the person you were shacking with, now they want to talk about marriage. Now they want to talk about things that, that they never discuss, but because I'm ready, because I'm ready to do something different. Now, because I made up my mind to do something different now, they, they are ready. Is that anybody tonight? If that was you, you, you done been through that. The more I do, the worse are they get. But when I get enough strength to leave, they, every time it seems like they want to straighten up. <laughs> He ain't bought you flowers, but all of a sudden you're getting ready to leave. You get flowers. She ain't cooked no meal, but all of a sudden you done made up your mind to leave. She start cooking for you. They, they want to fly straight when, when you're getting ready to go. But I want to encourage you tonight. We can't wait. We got to fly straight right now. The Bible said, no man know the day nor the hour that the Son of God return. Every person that just tuned in, we want to encourage you to share to five people. We want to encourage you to share to five people, tag five people in it, those of you that are just tuning in. We're in the book of St. Matthew, chapter number 25. I'm asking a question tonight, are you ready? Not, not is your house ready, not is your relationship ready, but are you ready? To serve God wholeheartedly. Are you ready and willing? Let, let, let's go further. Because what I want to discuss to you tonight through the word of God that you got to be ready for. You, you got to be ready. You got to be ready. You got to understand it's more to life than living any kind of way. It, it's more to life than popping bottles and riding around. With loud music is more than life than don't than than shooting and and, and, and killing and, and in the club. It's more to life. But the enemy make it look good that you know, we had a good time at the club. Just when you say you ain't going to the club no more, get what they say. Girl, now do you know rapper so and so gonna be there? Do you know? I'm going to pay your way. Do you know women are free before nine? Girl, come on and go with me. But you just made up your mind that you was getting ready to live right. Now, all of a sudden, because you begin to want to make up your mind to live right, the enemy decides to send you somebody that, that want to pretend to live right. The Bible says in St. Matthew chapter 6, verse number 33, first seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness. In order to live right, you got to first get yourself right. Watch this. Because this is not a per the people's walk. This is a personal walk. This is all about you and Christ. This, this ain't about everybody else. This ain't about the relationship you in that ain't of God. 
God looking to develop a relationship with you. God want to develop a relationship with you so it could be you and him. But we would rather get in relationship with man. We would rather get in relationship with woman before we get in relationship with God. But then six months later, a year later, six years later, 12 years later, 18 years later, you realize this person wasn't who you thought they was. was. Lord, what's going on? See, you were ready at the time because the enemy was trying to fulfill the lust of the flesh. You didn't want to be by yourself, so the enemy just sunk anybody. Hallelujah. The enemy just sunk anybody. The enemy just sunk anybody. When you make up your mind to live for God, yeah, it's going to be times where you feel lonely. Yeah, it's going to be times where it looked like that everybody else having a good time. But the truth of the matter is we don't walk by what we see. We walk by faith and not by sight. It always look like if you look on the commercial, they try to make the alcohol look like you're just going to have all sorts of type of fun. The beer, it look like it's just so cold that if you hot, you don't work hard that you deserve to get a beer. Because they know that men and women are visual. Men and women are visual. We want to see. And because we can see, we think with this head. We say, look, instead of thinking with our spiritual mind, we think with our head. We say, look, that look good. That look good. That drink right there look good. So what we do? We try it. We try it. Not knowing whether it's good or not, we try it. People willing to try all kind of challenges on Facebook. People willing to try anything on Facebook, but is not willing to try Jesus. It, anytime they come to Jesus and say, look, you got to give up that. All of a sudden, it call, every excuse in the book comes out. Why? Because Christ is the only one that's going to accept you one way. That's right. That's straight. He wants you to be holy. The devil does not care how you come. Long as he gets you, it does not matter. Let's go to chapter 25. Watch this, family. Are you ready? Are you ready? First, chapter 25, verse number one. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. Oh, we're going to start right there. The kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. What is a virgin? Tell me what a virgin is. Tell me what a virgin is. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. You, you got to fall somewhere amongst the ten. You, you got to fall somewhere amongst the ten. A virgin is someone who's pure. A person who has not been polluted. It said that there were ten virgins. Which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise and five were foolish. Now, now you have ten, ten virgin, ten pure people, ten people that have not been polluted. You have ten that can wear white. So, so that's all it takes for me to enter into heaven is for me to be a virgin. Nah. Because the Bible said five of them were wise. Five were foolish. They that were foolish took the lamps but took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessel with their lamps. Now we are looking at people who are prepared. The Bible says that five were wise took all in the lamp, but they also took a little all in a vessel with them. 
So not only did one person just have a lamp, five had a lamp, but the other five had a lamp and some oil. Mm. Now, which one is ready for his return? Is it, is it the one that just took the lamp with the oil? Or is it the one that took the lamp with the oil with a little bit in that vessel? They had some extra oil just in case he didn't show up when I thought he was going to show up. They, they said that he'll be here around this time. But now I see it this time he has not showed up. So they said, you know what? We better be safe than sorry. We're going to carry our lamp, but we're also going to carry a little more oil just in case. Was it while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. Now I need y'all to catch this. They were going waiting to meet the bridegroom. They were going waiting to meet the bridegroom. Ten of them were virgins. Ten of them, if they were women, they all could wear white. Ten of them have never been uh, polluted. If they were men, they could all wear white. They had never been polluted. But out of the ten, five were wise and five were foolish. The Bible said that the five took their lamp, but with a little oil, little oil in a vessel with them. The foolish took just the lamp alone, anticipating that I got enough oil in my vessel to wait. That, that the lantern that I hold is enough oil in him that I keep the lamp lit until he returns. Are you ready? Because see what has happened is some people feel like all they need is just to go to church. Some people feel like all they need is just to catch a little live on Sunday. Some people feel like all they need is just to catch a Facebook sermon. But that's only all in the lantern, not all in the vessel. So what happens when the oil in the lantern goes out? Let me show you. So if you only focus on getting your your your, your Sunday meal, your, your soul food, the word of God, if you only focus on getting that on Sunday through Facebook, what happens when Facebook is shut down? What happened when the internet may crash? Now because you were focused on only getting your meal on social media. Then when, the, when something happens with social media. When something happens with the internet. Now where your attention was getting your meal. You can no longer be fed like that. Five wise. Five fools. The wise had a vessel with them with more oil in it. Because they said, even if he don't come then, we got enough to wait on him. And some of you, you can't play this life figuring, well, when I get a certain age, I'll get right. Some You can't play and say, I'm going to wait. Somebody right now saying, well, once, once after this birthday party, I'm going to turn my life over to Christ. Who said that you'll make it? We see people dying daily. Somewhere all over the earth, over the world, somebody is dying daily. So somebody, is, somebody is laying down and not getting up. We cannot, saints, take that chance. That, that I'm going to wait until after I finish what I'm doing. I'm going to wait until I get married to live right. Who said you was ever going to get married before you live right? Maybe that's why you're not married because he wanted you to live right in order to be married. Let, let, let's go further. It said, while the, bri while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. They were waiting. Tarry means to wait. They were waiting on the bridegroom to come. In, in, in the anticipation they fell asleep 
with their lamps, five with the lamps and the lamps only. Five with the lamps and the oil. They all are anticipating the return of the bridegroom. You all are anticipating the return of Christ. But my question to you tonight, while you're anticipating the return of Christ, do you just have a vessel and a lantern with oil? Or do you just have the lantern with no, no extra oil? Are you anticipating to have more than enough? Or do you just want to have barely enough? Is it while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept, light still burning, all still going out. They all slumbered and slept. Watch this, verse six. At midnight was a cry. Behold, the bridegroom coming. Go ye out to meet him. We was out here all night. That we even fell asleep waiting on him. But somebody had just enough of all with none in a vessel. Some had a ladder of all, but still had some vessel, some oil in a vessel. Are you anticipating his coming? If you was to live like he'll be here tomorrow. Then you would be ready. Then you would be ready because no man knows the day. Watch this. The Bible said midnight there was a cry saying, listen, y'all get up. Go to meet him. The bridegroom cometh. And the foolish said unto the, verse number seven, then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. All of them got up. All of the virgins got up cutting the lamps. Oh, it's time to go. Hmm. Verse number eight. And the foolish said unto the wise, give us your oil for our lamps are gone out. Now I want you to remember that this is people who are virgins. This is people who are pure. This are people who have not been polluted. But the Bible says five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. Five of them said, listen, we waiting on him. We know he going to be here before midnight. But the Bible said that there was a cry at midnight. They were waiting on his return for them to go with the bridegroom. But because some, five of them said gelata alone would be enough. Five of them said just saying I'm saved would be enough. Five of them said just attending church on Facebook would be enough. Five of them said just doing it one time a week would be enough. The Bible said when the bridegroom came, there was a loud cry at midnight telling them. So all of them woke up cutting their lamps up. Let's cut the light up a little bit lighter. The five foolish said, wait a minute. Our lamps have gone out. Our lamps have gone out. We have no oil. What are you saying? I'm saying somebody was not prepared. And the last I checked, heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. But the five foolish said the lantern alone would be enough. But the Bible said when the cry came at midnight that they, they didn't have any oil. So they looked at the wise. They said, hey, listen, let us get some of your oil. Watch it. And the foolish said unto the wise, give us your oil for our lamps are gone out. Nine, but the wise answered saying, not so. Lest there be not enough for you, us and you. But go rather to them that sell it and buy for yourselves. What is he saying? They go to the one that's been prepared. And say, listen, let us get a little bit of your all. But the wise said, I don't even know if this is going to be enough by the time I make it to him. You better go back and do what you got to do to get it. He said, you better go back to those that sell all and get the all because I need my all. 
Is there anybody tonight under the sound of my voice that you need your all? Is there anybody tonight under the sound of my voice? You need your all. The foolish told the wise, give us some all. The wise said, no, you better go back and get you some. Because you had the same opportunity that I had to get Christ. And now that he's returned, you looking, trying to get yourself together. I need my all. This ain't about your mother, this ain't about your father, your sisters, your brother. This is a personal walk. This ain't about your pastor. This ain't about no deacon. This ain't about no missionary. This ain't about no evangelist, no apostle. You need your own all. Because as they're anticipating the wait, some people did not come prepared to wait until the bridegroom come. Over and over. They looked at the clock. The, the foolish. They looking at the clock. They looking at their oil. They looking at the oil as it continued to drop. The wise are not paying attention. To the oil. Because they know they got some oil. In a vessel. And some of you tonight. You need to understand. You got to have some oil in a vessel. You, you can't just count on just Facebook alone. You, you can't count on just listening to, to a message. You, you got to get in for yourself. Messages are good. They're great. How can we hear without a preacher? How can he preach except he's been sent? But you got to have your own personal relationship. The Bible said in the book of Hosea, my people are perishing. Five foolish are perishing for the lack of knowledge because they figured they know when Jesus Christ returned. But I'm here to tell you, the Bible declares, no man know. No man know when he returned. So how can we anticipate his return by living halfway? How can we anticipate his return by not being prepared? Heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. So that means we got to be prepared. Those that did not have the oil. They come to the ones that got the oil and say let us get some oil. But the wise were wise. They said, no, nah, you better go back and get your oil from those that sell it. I'm not going to give you my oil and then you make it and I miss out. Let's go to verse number nine. But the wise answer saying, not so. Lest there, not, there be not enough for you and me. But uh, go rather ye to them that sell it and buy for yourself. I wonder why. Five of the virgins decided that they didn't need to take no extra oil. Because they figured that they had all the time in the world to get it together. They figured that they could get right when they're 50s and 60s and 70s and 80s and, and 90s. But the truth of the matter, some people don't make it. The truth of the matter is it's a blessing just to be your age. It don't matter what age you is. Somebody did not make it to see your age. I don't care if you were 10. Somebody did not make it to see 10 years old. I don't care if you were 20. Somebody did not make it to see 20. I don't care if you were 30. Somebody did not make it to see 30. And so on and so forth. The Bible says that the wise were wise enough to tell them you better go get it from they who sell it. Because I'm not going to give you my all and then I can't make it in. Let go to verse 10. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came and they that were ready. Let's read this again. The Bible said in verse number 10, while they went to buy, the bridegroom came and they that were ready went in with him. Not, not they that was not ready. The Bible said they that were ready went in with it. You, you don't have time to have to go back and recuperate. You got five foolish that going back to get all, to go back by all, hoping that when they return, the door's still open. But the Bible clearly tells us that while they were gone, while they were gone, 
the bridegroom came. Half of them were ready, the other half was not ready. These were people that were virgins. These were people that were pure. These were people that had never been polluted. But five of them were foolish. The foolish, when the car was to come, they had to go and get some oil. Because the only person that was getting in was those that had a light shining. Hmm. So no wonder they was asking the wise to give us some of your oil. They said, no, you ain't getting none of our oil. Because I don't know how long I'm going to have to wait at that door. I need my light shining when I walk through the door. The Bible said men love darkness more than light because their deeds are evil. Um, the Bible also declares, you don't stumble in the day, for there's light. People stumble at night. Let me read that to you. John chapter 11. John chapter 11. I'm going to read this to you. Verse number 9 and 10. Listen to this. Jesus answered, are oh, there not 12 hours in the day? If any man walk up in the day, he stumble not because he see the light of this world. Watch this. But if a man walk in light, he stumble because there is no light in him. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He got to be in you. Not around you. Everybody got him but you. The Bible said five were wise. They took their lantern and they took a vessel of all with them. The five foolish said the they taking too much. They got to tote something extra. It looked like they doing more. It looked like they're not having fun. We walking just swinging the lantern. Now they walking and they got all in a vessel and they got the lantern. But the Bible said midnight. See, they wouldn't anticipate him to come at midnight. No man know the day nor the hour at midnight. There was a cry. And all the virgins got up turning their laps. And, and they realized that I, in order for me to go in, I got to have light. The foolish realized that we don't have light. So they go to the wise and say, please, y'all give us some of y'all. They said, the wise said, no. Nah, I can't give you my oil. I need my oil to make sure I get in. Let's go further. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him. They that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. The Bible says they that were ready went in with him. How many family was ready? It was 10 of them. Tell me how many was ready. Tell me how many were ready. Give me your answer. Tell me right now how many people. He said, and they that were ready went in with him. How many went in with him? Come on, let us know. Come on. That means oh, only half out of ten, half of them went in with it. Five wise and five foolish. The foolish had to go back and get some all. The wise were prepared. Because they had, they were prepared, they went in with it. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. 11. Afterward came also the other virgins. Now here comes the foolish. Afterwards came also the other virgins saying, Lord, Lord, open up to us. Lord, Lord, open up to us. We here. We here. We, we, we made it. We just had to go back and get some oil, but we made it. But he said unto them, Very, verily, I say unto you, 
I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye neither know the day nor the hour when the Son of Man cometh. He said, listen, I need you to be on the watch. I need that you to live ready. Because you don't know the day nor the hour that the Son of Man return. So by you playing it, well, I just, I'll be ready. I'll be waiting and ready. I'll get ready. He's the, the five foolish. They were ready to a certain extent. But once, he, once the time overlaps their time, they were no longer ready. Because they did not have what it takes to make it the rest of the way. And some of you tonight that's under the sound of my voice, you got to have what it takes to make it the rest of the way. He said, listen, be careful that, that you don't try to be like the foolish. Be careful that you don't say, well, I got enough. You can never do more than enough to make it into heaven. But you can do less than enough. You ain't going to hear nobody say, come on up, you did way more than what's required of you. But what you will hear say, depart from me, I know you're not. You didn't do enough. You workers of iniquity. The five foolish, they did enough to get there, but they did not do enough to stay there. Some of you under the sound of my voice, yeah, you did enough to get there. But now, do you have enough all in you to stay there? I'm asking you a question. Do you have enough all to stay? With everything going on, do you have enough all to stay? Do you? Can you stay in the rain? Do you have enough all to stand the test of time? The Bible said God does nothing except he, he in the earth except he revealed it to first his service the prophet. That means a prophet somewhere gonna know what God is doing. He's gonna tell some one of his prophets. But one thing he will not tell them is when he's sending his son back. You just got to be ready. Tonight I pop the question, are you ready? No man know the day nor the hour. Don't don't take it for granted that that I'm doing I'm doing better than what I used to do. I press toward the mark. Yeah, you might have been doing better than you did last week. All of that may be true. But yesterday's salvation ain't enough for the day's salvation. You get this is thing that you got to you got to continue in. Great is he that is in me than he that's in the world. The five foolish, even though they were virgin, even though they came there, they could not go in because they were not prepared. There's some people that will not be prepared for his return. But the people under the sound of my voice, I'm telling you, you got to prepare yourself for his return. You got that right. If you stay ready, you never have to get ready. The problem is, you feel like doing, you're going to miss something. Man, I had to tote some on. I, I had to go this. It's so much, I can't do nothing. You've been bought with a price. You got to want Christ more than anything. And if you don't want him more than anything, then anything will keep you from Christ. Let me say that again. You have to want Christ more than anything. But if you want something more than Christ, anything will keep you away from Christ. No excuse. No excuse. Where well, the past ain't right. Where well, this one ain't. That ain't got nothing to do with you. Because five were wise and five were foolish. The Bible even tells us, let the wheat and tar grow together. 
that there be a time called separating. And when the bridegroom came, that was the separation period for the ten virgins. The five foolish had to leave the five wise and go back and get off. But when they returned, the door was shut and they could not get in. The Bible says, seek me while I may be found. Call upon me while I'm near. Let the wicked forsake his ways. I wonder why he said, seek me while I may be found. I wonder why he's telling you to seek him where he, while he may be found. While he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake their ways. Because he ain't going to always be found for some people. There's going to come a time where, where people ain't going to find him. Seek him while he may be found. Don't let it be said too late. The Bible said that we live in perilous times. Where men are lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. When I say men, I'm talking about men and women. They would rather do things contrary to the word of God than do things in the will of God. That means they go to church, five wise and five foolish, virgin. They'll go to church, but then they'll get out of church and they'll still do what they want to do. Knowing that they've been bought with a price. Do you really think that Jesus died so you can live contrary to the word of God? He said, I died that you might have a right to the tree of life. That you might have a right to the tree of life. Because the tree of life is only coming through the bread of life. Jesus is that bread. That's why when you do communion, he said, take Eat, this is my body, which was broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So, Jesus is the new tree of life. So, he came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. But you got to be willing to go after him with everything that you got. You got to be willing to go after him with everything that you got. Now is the time to get ready, to be ready. All this getting ready, almost there, you got to get ready now. Because the next minute, the next second is not promised. And if you are not ready, if you are not ready, the door gonna shut on you. That means you gonna call the search for him and you can't find him. The Bible said two would be on the rooftop, one taken, and one left. Somebody is going to be left because they were not ready. See, it will be different if I say, listen, I need some food ready tomorrow by 12 o'clock noon. So you might say today, I ain't going to do nothing to tomorrow because I know the time that is due. But you don't know how long you got. So you better get ready. Right now. You got to make up your mind right here, right now. That I got to be ready. I got to be anticipating his return any day now. I can't come here and live contrary to the word of God and then expect to go back to heaven. No matter how many songs they sang at the church, I'm going over yonder and all of this and that. Take me to the king. That's all fine and dandy, but if you ain't ready, you ain't going to see him. Five wise. Five foolish. It will, it'll be different if he said the wise were versions. But he said it was ten versions. Five of them were wise. Five of them were foolish. That means that these people all could have made it in. But somebody came anticipating a certain time frame on his return. 
But we know the part. We know he gonna take us in before it get dark. But the Bible said midnight. That's when they cry. Because they had been anticipating the return of Jesus in a certain time bracket. But because they were foolish and they anticipated a certain time bracket. They figured that they had time to get ready. People are leaving this word every week, every month, left and right and right and left. You don't have time to say, I get ready next year. Next week, I give my life to Christ. You got to do it now. Watch this. Verse number 12, but he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know ye not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour when the Son of Man return. You don't know when his return is. So stop playing like you got all the time in the world. The devil is the only one that will tell you you got plenty of time. That you're going to make it to see 50. You got plenty of time. You're going to make it to see 70. You got plenty of time. You're going to make it to see 30. The enemy is the only one that will make you feel like you got enough time. But the truth of the matter is time waits for no man. If you go based on, well, you know, I believe I'm going to live to see 70. It's good for you to believe, but there's a roll call. You, you got to be ready. 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 He could return tonight. You got to be ready. The Bible said at midnight there was a cry. What am I saying? I'm saying you got to be ready. It could be this midnight. But we feel like we got all the time in the world. Don't let nobody make you think that you got all the time in the world. And then when you find out it's too late, it's too late. When you find out it's too late, it's too late. No man know. The day nor the hour that the son of man returned. The son of God. Are you ready? Are you anticipate he return any time now? But even if he don't come at midnight tonight, are you still, do you still have enough oil to wait until he come? That when he come, he'll catch your light shining. So men can see your good work. He'll catch your light shining. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. A city that sits on the hill that can't be hidden. Your light has to shine. The ten virgins all had light shining, but something happened along the way with five of them. When they became anticipating the move of God to be at a certain time and that time did not come. They had no all. But now when he decides to return, they are out of all. You got to have enough all in your vest that even if he don't come, I can still pull some in here. That I got enough that's going to last me until he returns. Some of you, it's time to rededicate your life back to Christ. Because you might have done some foolish things. You might have felt like you got all the time in the world to get yourself together. You, you may feel like that you were you you got enough time that 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 just because I believe I got another. 40, 50 years in me. You, that may be true. You may have another 40, 50 years in you. But did he say that he, he was coming back when you, when your time was up? Or did he say that he coming back and nobody is going to know the day 
nor the hour at his return. He's saying, listen, I need y'all to be prepared. I know it may look like everybody doing things contrary to the word of God. Some people living contrary to the word. God said, I need you prepared. Because one thing that God don't mind is leaving folk that ain't ready. Let me help you again. One thing that Christ do not mind is leaving folks that ain't ready. You don't believe me? Watch this. Look what he said right here. After came also the, also the other virgin saying, Lord, Lord, open up to us. But he said unto them, verily I say unto you, I know ye not. He said, I don't know you. The Bible never tells us that he opened the door for them. The Bible tells us that he said, I don't know you. Because you were not ready. I don't know you. I don't see the light of my son in you. You can, you don't have all the time in the world to get ready. You got to be ready. Tonight, I want to ask you a question. Are you ready? If you are not ready, I advise you to get ready right now so you can be ready. And when you be ready, you stay on ready. Anticipating his coming. Leave, live your life as though tomorrow he'll return. Are you, are you ready? Are you, are you really ready? Are you, you still want to play around with people? What's going to happen is the people you're playing around with going to get the word, going to get the message, going to accept Christ and then you'll be the one that's sitting on the outside. In this life, you got to be willing to walk along. Family ain't going to be the ones that always support you. You got to be willing to go if I got to go by myself. This is a personal walk we're talking about. Some people are only hindrances and not helps. You got to get yourself together. We just read that five were wise and five were foolish. That the foolish had to leave to go back and get some oil, but they did not have enough time anticipate that by the time we go back and come, they done ran and figured they come back that he would be there waiting. He said, no, I'm not, I done waited on you your whole life. You had all your life until I returned to get yourself together. But every day you took it for granted. Every day you said, well, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it next week. I do it after my birthday. I'm going to turn up one last time. This is my last time. And because you said this is your last time doing it, it never became your last time doing it. You got to prepare yourself. I'm speaking to the people under the sound of my voice. And those that watch the replay. You got to prepare yourself. Look around you in the news. You got to prepare yourself. Some people, he's waited on you 20 years and you just decided to give your life to Christ. Some people, he waited on you 30 years and you just decided to give your life to Christ. Some of you 40 years and so on and so forth and however long it took that he waited on you. But there's a time ticking in heaven. There's a time that God already sought for his son to return. The only thing the Bible tells us is about the return. It is said there'll be wars and rumors of wars. Mothers will be against daughters and daughters against mothers. Fathers against sons and sons against. This will be. There'll be a falling away. Men will be lovers of themselves. If you look at all the signs. You understand why I'm asking you, are you ready? Because he could come back. The Bible also say we, we won't even be able to tell what season we in. I don't 
don't know if we in summer or spring. Sometimes it feel like we we still in a little winter. Sometimes it look like we in a little fall. We don't know. With all of that in front of us, this is the reason that you know you got to be ready. You, you got to be ready. I'm talking to somebody. And maybe this may be the last live that, that you will hear. You may, you may get off of here and never be able to hear another word. But tonight you hear me telling you, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? I'm telling you, don't worry about no family. Are you ready? Don't worry about no friends. Are you ready? He said, let the weed and tag grow together. People playing in church. People doing things contrary to the word of God. Let the weed and tag grow together. He said, I'm going to do the separate. Because when he separates, it's like separating the white from the dark clothes. It's going to be real easy to recognize what go well. Tonight, are you ready? Tonight, are you ready? If you're not ready, it's time to get ready. It's time to ask Christ to come into your life. It's time to accept him as your Lord and Savior. It's time to believe that he died and on the third day he rose with all power in his hand. It's the time to invite him in. Ask him to lead and guide you. And direct you into all truth. Time waits for no man. The clock is steady ticking. Are you going to steady play with it? Or are you going to get ready? Have you made up your mind that I got to be ready? When, when you wake up or when you lay down, you got to know that if he was to come back right now, I truly believe that I'm going back with him. And if you don't feel like you at that point, then there's some things you need to repent. There's some things, some things you need to turn away from. Because the enemy does not care if he keep you out the will of God. That is his assignment. When you're ready to do right, you will stop putting up a fight. When you're ready to do right, you'll quit making excuses. Death all around you, but yet and still. Death all around you, but yet and still. You say, I got enough time. Do you? I want everybody to answer this question. Do you have enough time to continue to play? Is there enough time for you to continue to play? Is it? Playtime is over. I don't care what you see some some of these preachers doing. I don't care. It's about you. This is a personal walk. This is a personal walk. And I'm here to tell you, you'll lose family and friend along the way, but you'll gain more than you lose. It's not time to play because all the signs that he said, they manifested. So if the signs of his return is manifesting, then you, you don't have time. You, you don't have time and you need to quit allowing people to make you, make you think that you got more than enough time. 
No one knows. I'm going to read this last verse and we gone. We getting ready to pray. And we gone. Verse, remember Matthew 25 and 13. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour where the Son of Man come. You know the day nor the hour. You know the day nor the hour. People who have gone on before you, life ended, would love to trade places with you so they can go and fix some stuff to make sure that they make it in. Because the truth of the matter is when that breath is out of that body, when it's all over, it's nothing you can do to ensure that you'll get in when life leave the body. That's why he said no man know. The day nor the hour. He said are you ready? Tonight he popped the question. He said are you ready? Because there's somebody that thought that it was play time. But it's prayer time. Are you ready? On his return. I know you heard great grandma say it. I know you heard grandma say it. I know you heard mama say it. But are you ready? No plan. All praying. You got to live your life. Anticipating. His return. Knowing. That it could be any day now. I don't want it to be said too late. That you didn't make it in. It was too late. So tonight. We're going to pray. That salvation. That if it's not yours. That you can obtain it tonight. By accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Asking him to come into your heart. Forgive you of your sin. Cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Accept him as your Lord and Savior. Put him Lord over your life. Tell him to lead God and direct you. Submit your will to his will. Today starts a new day. Don't, don't, don't be getting ready continuously. But be ready. That means if you ain't ready, get ready right now. Clear your mind. Clear your hearts. Clear your conscience. Do whatever you got to do to get ready. Do whatever you got to do to get ready. Because he's counting on you. You got enough time. You want to be saved. He can save you just like that. Ask him to save. You. Accept him. Call him into your Ask him to come into your life and lead God and direct you. Ask him to fill you with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. With the evidence of speaking in authentic mature tongues of fire. Ask him to be who he has called you to be. To help you to walk this thing out. Ask him. Today is your day. Today is your day. We don't know what tomorrow holds. But we know who holds tomorrow. I pop the question. Are you ready? Everyone under the sound of my voice. Are you ready? Send the fire. We are getting ready to pray. Are you ready? We getting ready to pray. Even in even in the Lord's prayer said, Thy kingdom come. Are you ready? Send the fire, family.
Playtime is over. Don't get caught playing and spraying. I saw a man, and I think I told people this, keep sending the fire. I saw the Lord show me, boom, took me up in a, in a vision. And I looked in the dark pits of hell, and I seen the man down there, man real close to me. Man still preaching, still living contrary to the word of God. And I'm looking, and I'm like, Lord done showed me. So I released the word of the Lord over the church, not to embarrass, but to let them know that time wait for nobody. You, you can't wait until you feel like you're ready. You'll never get ready. You got to go out there now. You, you got to go out there right now. You, you got to go out there now. You got, he said, no man know the day nor the hour of my return. You got to go out there now. And that's some of you, you got to make up to your mind right now. God, I'm coming after you. Now, not you coming after me. I'm chasing after you. Is there anybody under the sound of my voice tonight that can say, Lord, I'm chasing after you. I'm running away from the things that keep me away from you, but I'm chasing after you because you is where I want to be. Is there anybody tonight that's willing to say that I'm going to chase after him? It ain't, go, it ain't about going along to get along. It's about righteousness. It's about holy living. It's about a lifestyle because he said, I'm coming back for a church without a spot or a wrinkle. He said, I'm coming back for a church without a spot or wrinkle. I wonder why. Heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. Are you prepared? I want you to begin to chase after him. From Genesis to Revelation, through your prayer life, Begin to chase after him with everything that you got, with every fiber in your body. Chase after him. Say, Lord, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Miss Kiki, inbox. You and your friend. Hallelujah. It's time the Lord, I got to chase after you. With everything on the inside of me, I got to chase after you. I'm telling y'all right here, right now. You, you, you got to go after him. The Bible said that the enemy came to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I came that you have life and have it more abundantly. Choose this day who you're going to serve. You, you got to go out for him with everything that you got. It's time to let go of the things that are holding you back. Anything that's contrary to the word of God, it tries to anchor you down. It makes it harder for you to get to Christ. But tonight, because you're under this anointing, everything that's been holding you is getting destroyed. Take up, take off and go after him. Not looking for the things behind you. But I press toward the mark of a higher calling. I press. It's time for you to press. No, it won't be easy. <laughs> because you're too much of a threat to the devil's kingdom. So, no, it won't be easy. The devil, he the king of his castle. And Christ is the king of our castle. So, no, it ain't going to be easy. Because the enemy know if you ever get a hold of it. That not only are you going to change people around you. 
but you're going to train people near you. And those that see you, and those that know you, they're going to see if God do it for you, he can do it for them. So it's your opportunity. Nothing is holding you back as of right now. Nothing is holding you back as of right now. Every curse is being broken. Every yoke is being destroyed. Nothing is holding you back from getting to Christ right now. But you got to get up and chase out for him. This is an everyday thing, not just a one day thing. You got to make up your mind. God, I want you more than anything. Hallelujah. Tiara. Listen, tell him to come into your life. Accept him as your Lord and Savior. Cry out to him right where you at. Say, Lord, please save me. I want to be saved. I don't want to continue to live the way I'm living. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Lord, take my life and do something with it. Give me script, Father, to chase after you. Lord, save me from myself. Some of you under the sound of my voice, it ain't people that's getting you out the will of God. It's yourself. Tell God to save me from me. Because what happens is you begin to talk yourself. It don't take all of that. I got enough time. He don't understand. You begin to talk yourself out of it when you know time ticking. Some of you tell God, save me from me. Save me from me. Tiara, if you accept him as your Lord and Savior, if you ask him to come into your heart, if you tell him, Lord, I make you my Lord and Savior, anything that's not like God, I, I, I don't want it. I throw up my hands in a surrendering mode. I surrender. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Lead God and direct me in the path that you will have for me to go. Lord, I'm here. I'm yours. Come into my life. Clean me up from the inside out. And you say. And you say. Now, Terry, you need to start rejoicing because you say. See, it does not take a lot to get you saved. When your heart is right and your mouth match your heart, you can be saved. The problem is not getting saved. The problem is staying saved. The problem is not getting saved. The problem is staying saved. People get saved today and then tomorrow, they go back out there. No, you got to stay saved. You got to stay saved. Kiki, you know God wants you more than anything. You, you know God wants you more than anything. And it's steady pulling on you. Lord, help her. Lord, help her in Jesus' name. Help her, God. Renew her mind. Renew her strength. Help her. Let her be who you have called her to be. Help her, Lord. Give her strength to press toward the mark of a higher calling in you. God, let her seek you like never before. Right now in the name of Jesus. Give her enduring power. Right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we decree and declare a turnaround and chasing after you like never before in our life. In Jesus' name.
Come on, receive that in Jesus' name. Come on. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Are you ready? Today is the day. Hallelujah. Send the fire family. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, every person under the sound of my voice, every person that may watch the replay, Father, search our hearts, search our minds, search our bodies, our souls. God, search us over. Everything that's not like you, Father, remove it. Help us to be who you have called us to be. Help us to stand. Help us declare your word, Father, in season. Help us to pray in season and out of season. Help us to stand on your word. Help us, Father. Father, we accept you as our Lord and Savior. Forgive us. Forgive us our shortcomings, our incapability. Forgive us. Help us to be the men and women of God that you called us to be. Strengthen us now. Give us a hunger and a thirst after righteousness. Every ungodly soul tie, let it be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Strengthen us now. Fill us, God. Some for the first time with the Holy Ghost. Father, fill those that have pulled out. Refill them. So we can pour into others right now in the name of Jesus. Give us an infilling of your spirit like never before. Father, let this word take root and grounded in their life. That their life will no longer be the same. Father, we thank you right now. Every assignment of the enemy concerning marriages, concerning homes, concerning your people every spirit of confusion father we bind it we render it powerless every distraction let it be destroyed by fire and father we decree and declare it done in your son Jesus name we pray amen amen Amen. Come on. Come on. Tell the Lord thank you. Amen. 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 Congratulations. You on a new slate. Every person under the sound of my voice. If you accepted him into him. You got a new slate. Now it's time for you to live for him. Those of you that just came on, ask him to forgive him of your sin, cleanse you from all unrighteousness, come into your heart, and you accept him as your Lord and Savior. Now it's time to live for him. Now it's time to live for him. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. If all the people right here, right now, would just live for it. Can you imagine how the city of Thompson, Augusta, Renz, Louisville, Wiley, Helsinki, can you imagine Grove Town, Deering, Harlem? Can you imagine Washington Rail? Can you imagine the souls that have come to Christ? It's a set of people that you're going to bring to Christ. And they waiting to hear from you. What they need, you carrying it. And God is waiting on you to deliver that word. God is waiting on you to release that word into the people. So they can come unto Christ. You got an obligation. Whether you fulfill it or not, you got you're supposed to be saved. 
You're supposed to be holy. You're supposed to live it. So let's not play church. Let's become the church. Watch this. Don't play church. Become the church that he's coming back for. He said, I'm coming back for a church without a spot or a wrinkle. Don't play church. Become the church that he's coming back for. He, he said, I'm coming back for a church without a spot or a wrinkle. Become that church. This is your day. Miracle signs and wonders shall follow them that believe. Now, was this message helpful? Watch this, family. Was this mess message tonight helpful? Watch this, family. God gave me message, gave me this message to give to His people. That means somebody needed. Was tonight's message helpful? Let us know, family. It's time to become that church. We got yes. Come on. Was it helpful tonight? After you said, was it helpful or not? I want you to show some love. We're getting ready to leave for tonight. So after you said whether it was helpful or not, I want you to show some love. Hallelujah. Somebody under the sound of my voice, y'all listen to me good. And somebody watch this replay. This may be the only time. This may be the only time. It's time. Yes, yes, yes. It, it, it's definitely time. It's time. It's time. And you know it's time. Because the tug and the pool been on you. The attack's been harder and harder. You, you, you know it's time. You know it's time. No one has to be there to understand what's there. He knows all and he sees all. It's time. It's time. See, only if you could take what he showed you and put it in front of you and chase after that because that's, his what, that's the next dimension. That's where he wants you to be. But you will not get there without a fight because the enemy don't want you to get there. Because too many people, when you get there, too many people will be there waiting on you. They'll be there waiting on you. People waiting on you to arrive. Time. I'll cover the household. See, sometimes you don't have to say much or nothing. You can just cover. You can just cover. Cover the house. You know how to get there. Me and you done talked before. You know how to go to where he needs you to be. Am I talking to you? If you know I'm talking to you, you say you talking to me. You know how to get there because we already done know. We already done been through that. You know how to get there. And he ain't settling for halfway. He already know, you know what it takes to get there. 
you just got to go back to that place in your mind where I did anything to get to it. And I got it. Because it's right there at you. But God said, you can do more than what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Because he said, the last hard event of your life, you, 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 you took off everything and you suited up and you did what you had to do. Now you got to do what you got to do to get there. I don't care what wall is in front of you. Knock it down to get there. Everybody in your household, everybody connected to your lineage is depending on you. This ain't no game. This ain't no gimmicks. God depending on you to get there. God said, I'm waiting. How long are you going to make me wait? I don't want to use nobody else. I want to show them what I can do with you. I know who I want to use. I know what I got invested in you. So much in that household in God got invested in that. You know how to get there. And I'm not going to say you can't get there. You can get there if you want to get there. Now I'm telling you as a soldier, as a man of God, as a woman of God, mount up and get there. Mount up and get there. Your family depending on you. I'm for real, for real. You got people depending on you. Get there. If you don't get there, they won't get there. Do like you used to do. When you got, when you got his attention. When you felt him, do like you used to do. Read that word, study that word. Then begin to live the word that you read. You can't go to any place. They ain't, for, they ain't forcing you to be who you're supposed to be. I'm speaking prophetically to you. You know I'm talking to you. You, you, you go where it's comfortable. You can't go where it's comfortable. You got to go where somebody going to push you and push you and push you until you get into where you're supposed to be. The problem with the church is so many people going where they're comfortable at. They ain't growing. They just going. Enough of going, it's time to start growing. If I ain't growing, there's no need of going. I'm talking to somebody prophetically already. I'm talking to somebody right here, right now. I ain't got to call no name out because I know that you done grabbed it. I know that you're sitting on the other side of this screen saying he talking to me. You sitting there, water in your eyes. I see you. He talking to me. It cost me to get the R. But it's worth it. I had to do what I had to do. And it cost sometimes I had to walk away from family and friends. Because if you ain't trying to help me, you trying to hurt me. I got to do what I got to do to get his attention. There's a tongue and there's a pool and I got to answer the call. I'm going to give y'all two prophetic prophecies that the Lord gave me. It was one with this dude. And um, the dude, but the dude came on my life on the day. And I seen the dude laying on, on a hospital bed, a bed of affliction. The dude wasn't even really old or nothing like that. And I seen the dude laying on the bed. The dude 
he 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 in talks are not the ones that I'm talking to now. I don't, I don't think this man ain't still ain't on here no more. But he came on this live and he was laying on the bed, on the hospital bed. He was laying on the hospital bed. So we got to keep it lifted up. He from he from Tops. I ain't gonna call no name. But he laying on the hospital bed. He ain't in the hospital now, but he was laying on the hospital bed. On the scripture. When I seen him, there like wasn't much life left in him. You gonna know that this all real. I'm telling you, that's what brought the prophecy back to my mind when I saw him. I was like, what the world? But then this other prophecy the Lord showed me. The Lord showed me it was a man that was having a, he was stockpiling. The man was taking stuff and he was hiding. He was hiding. He was taking stuff from one place, from somebody else. He he was taking some of the stuff off of what he's supposed to be taking somewhere else. He was taking some of the stuff off, but he was stockpiling. And the Lord told me to let him know. And if he watched the replay, he'll know. And if he out here, he'll know. Enough of the stockpiling. You getting ready to get caught. You getting ready to get caught. Enough of the stockpiling. You better get yourself together. Before the, before the enemy have you down the road because you were stockpiling some stuff that didn't belong to you. Figuring that, that, that nobody would never miss it. Wake up. God see everything. Send the fire, family. We get ready to go. But the man that was stockpiling, I'm telling you, if you don't do something quick, Lord showed me it make it so bad. It's like buy some buy some water. Not 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 no river. Maybe like a pond or something. Somewhere back by close to a screen or something. It was something. But you would stockpiling this stuff. It was almost like different piles of almost like stuff, different piles. You were trying to save a lot of it. You you would have a song and then you would take it and you were supposed to take it one place but the man took it off and he left half of it at his at his place wherever this little place that down the little road and then it's a little road and and there was a water back there and you stockpiling it. This man y'all gonna hear about it. This man stockpiling. He better reach out to me. He better do something quick because I seen him getting caught. He got to get himself together. He better repent. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get yourself together. Hallelujah. Listen, God bless your family. Hallelujah. Every person that needed a word, receive that word. If you know somebody that's doing the stockpiling, if you know somebody... Uh, I'm telling you, when y'all gonna play this video back, and you gonna say, he said that guy was on there, and you gonna see where that guy gonna be. You gonna see. Hallelujah. We worship you. Come on, everybody, tell God thank you. Just tell God thank you. Hallelujah. Your time. It's time. It's time. Y'all got to get with some people pushing you to do right. They, they ain't making you feel comfortable with doing wrong. Come on, tell God thank you. Come on, tell God thank you. We get ready to go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No more.
Hallelujah. So listen, y'all know I'll be back on Tuesday with a watch party at 8 p.m. Make sure y'all tune in Tuesday at 8 p.m. Hallelujah. Those of you that are not following me, follow me on YouTube. Follow me on YouTube. Follow me on YouTube. At Shines Hines. S-H-I-N-E-S. H-I-N-E-S. Follow me on Instagram at Shines underscore Hines. Hallelujah. Come on, tell God thank you. Come on, tell God thank you. Hallelujah. Come on, tell God thank you. Ain't no stockpiling. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Terror. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Glory. Hallelujah. So listen, family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God wants you more than anything. But more than that, you need him. More than everything around you. House divided can't stand. You gotta come together. You gotta pray together. You gotta stop the devil in his tracks. It's your time. It's in your hands from him. I gave you directions. This is only for Pacific individual. I gave you directions. What to do. Just know I'm praying with you and I'm praying for you. Listen, God bless each and every one of you. Listen, I love you. I'm praying with you. I'm praying for you. God bless you. I love you. Shalom.